Hey everybody, I'm going to talk to you about um, post-operative care for septorhinoplasty or rhinoplasty. Septorhinoplasty meaning fixing the septum and internal structure and the shape. Rhinoplasty meaning fixing the shape. So after the surgery, um, you're going to go home and you're going to notice a lot of swelling. Um, you may also notice some black and blues. Black and blues usually develop under the eyes. Um, the swelling just tends to be, you know, the nose and kind of the mid face. The black and blues would develop if we broke the nasal bones. Sometimes we need to break these nasal bones to narrow them or straighten them. Um, if you don't break the nasal bones, then a lot of times you don't really have swelling. But in terms of the swelling, the best things to do are one, keep your head elevated. Trying to keep your head elevated for one to three days and that means your head above your heart try not to keep your head in a dependent position that will help kind of decrease some of the swelling um, number two in terms of the bruising um oh strike that number two in terms of the swelling ice you can use ice ice packs usually like a bag of peas or something that's draped on the face or over the nose. It's sometimes a little bit difficult just because we might have dressings on the nose, but you can use those and that will help. Now, in terms of the bruising, one thing that may help is Arnica. Arnica Montana is a, uh, an herbal supplement that has been kind of shown to decrease bruising, so you can definitely do that. You can buy those at like Whole Foods or um, health food stores. Um, so that's swelling and bruising. <clears throat> now, in terms of what's going to be going on with your nose, you're going to have potentially a dorsal splint, which is like a folded piece of metal that's draped over the top of the dorsum. That helps keep the skin down and keeps the nasal bones straight. That dorsal dressing we will remove at one week when you come back. So you don't need to do anything. The only thing that you need to do is keep that dry and in place. So you don't want to get it wet when you're in the shower. So really try to, because it's held on by an adhesive. So you really want to try to keep it dry. Number two, you might see some black threads that are coming out of your nose and taped on your cheeks. Those are attached to a um, nasal packing um, that is holding pressure on the turbinates which come from the side of the nose. We trim those during the case so we put these little packings kind of adjacent to them to keep pressure and decrease the risk of bruising. So if you see a black thread that means those are in there and then what we usually do is have you remove them at 24 hours. What you do is you lift the thread up and then you gradually increase pressure on the thread and pull the packing out. It's a very weird feeling, um, but that can come out at 24 hours. When you take that out, you may notice some bet improved airflow, but I bet you still won't be breathing great. And the reason for that is that you still have swelling on the inside, but we also oftentimes have two little sheets of silicone. It's like little rubber sheeting on each side of the septum. That stays in there for the whole week like this nasal dorsum, and I take that out at your post-operative visit at one week. So you really might not be breathing great even though those turbinate packs come out because there's still something in there. Um, next, you'll be seeing stitches here and kind of up in the nostril and coming around the inside of the nostril so kind of like this that's the area where we made the incisions to kind of expose the structure of the nose so what we really recommend is that people um, keep those moist with antibiotic ointment for three days and then vaseline after three days don't use the antibiotic ointment for more than three days because you can actually get an allergy to it um, transition to Vaseline. And the reason, the rationale for this is that wounds will heal approximately 50% quicker if you keep it moist. Now, on our instruction sheets that we gave you in the office, you'll see um, a part about crusting. So if crusting develops here or in the nostril lumen, you want to get that crusting out. You want to remove that crusting. And the way that best way to do that is to take a Q-tip and 
um, soak it in half water, half hydrogen peroxide, and lightly kind of rub the incisions with it, and that will get the crust off. You want to prevent the crust from forming. Um, after the surgery, we will give you antibiotics, most likely, that will help prevent infection in the soft tissues. Um, and then I also will sometimes give pain medicine. If it's not super invasive procedure, then sometimes just Tylenol is adequate, but pain medicine is sometimes needed. Um, so you'll be taking those after the um, surgery. If you can just do Tylenol instead of the pain medicine, that's obviously better. Don't take any blood thinners like ibuprofen, um, Aleve, aspirin. So it's aspirin or kind of the NSAID group. Those increase the risk for bleeding. Um, so you want to not take those for one week, just like you didn't take them prior to the surgery. Other herbal supplements can also theoretically increase the risk, so it might be worthwhile avoiding those also. Um, in terms of bleeding, I mean, you can expect one to three, one to four days where you have some bleeding. Initially, it'll be more brisk. As time goes on, it will settle and become more mucus, blood-tinged mucus. But we give you a little snuffer dressing that you wear underneath your nose, and it's held on by another apparatus. You can use that for the first several days if you want, just to catch any Uzis. But you don't need to, but it might be convenient. Um, in terms of activities, the first week we really have people just be completely relaxed at home. You can be up around in home doing things like, um, you know, cooking your food and stuff like that. But you want to be really relaxed because you don't want to increase the risk of having bleeding. The second week, you can do a little bit more. You can go out for a casual walk. Um, some people ask about golfing. Um, you could do like putting or chipping, things like that. Or if you're a basketball player, you can shoot some baskets, but you don't wanna be doing anything too strenuous. By the third week, you can increase it a little bit. So you can you know, maybe walk a little bit more vigorously. You can stretch a little bit. I still wouldn't be like lifting any heavy weights or running or doing hits like high intensity workouts, but you can be a little more active. And then I usually say that people can kind of resume normal activities by around a month. Um, also, if we break the nasal bones, those will take around a month, four to six weeks to heal. So that's another reason why you shouldn't be doing anything too strenuous because you could theoretically hit the nasal bones and move the um, bones themselves. Um, so then for the follow-up appointment, I usually see people back at one week. At the one week appointment, we would take off the dorsal splint if it's there. We would trim the little remaining stitches if they're there. Those are absorbable though. So if we don't trim all the stitches at the post-op visit, don't be worried because they usually just kind of flake off. And then we also remove the nasal splints and suction out the nose the nasal splints are those silicone sheets I talked about earlier in the video. Then we may retape the nose, um, and I'll probably have you keep doing um, Vaseline for maybe another week. Um, oftentimes you can resume your allergy medicines after that appointment, but not nasal steroid sprays. Nasal steroid sprays would need to wait until further out once everything is healed. Um, so I think that's the majority of the key points that we all need to be aware of for the care and information after the surgery. Other questions can be called into us through Jessica, our on-call doctor, um, or you know if you see us in the office. So, all right, I hope this is helpful. Alrighty, bye.